Welcome. In this video clip, we're going to take a look at how we can use the familiar Arctis for Desktop software to connect to a variety of web services which are generally available on the GeoWeb. We're going to use these public web services to make maps from data that's generally held by other people, and we're going to take a look at how we can combine these public web services with our own data to make new maps on Arctis Desktop. We're used to thinking of web services in a particular way at this stage. By now, most people are familiar with the fact that an Arches server exposes a series of REST-based endpoints. This particular REST-based endpoint is from the Central Statistics Office, and you can see that it lists the variety of services that are available from the CSO. The services on this particular Arches server are organized in terms of the geography that they represent, all the way down to small areas from the 2011 census. These web services are generally used to make web applications, such as the excellent SAPMAP from Census uh, 2011, published by the CSO. This is the same data that we've just been looking at, now incorporated in an Arctis view for Flex, and we can click on any small area to get information about the population in that small area and access to further information um, on the CSO website. Going back to the CSO endpoint, You'll see we get a number of options as to how we can actually access that map service, one of which is an Arctis.com map, such as this one, which shows the same information now based on an Arctis.com web viewer, and you can see it raises a pop-up with the information in it. But you will have noticed that along here we have various other options for how we can access this information, one of which is ArcMap, and this is what we're going to be talking about in the main today. In addition to accessing information directly from Arctis for server endpoints, such as this one, we are increasingly seeing people build portals on Arctis Online, such as this portal from the Department of Education and Skills. These portals can present the same sort of REST information, but in a slightly different way. And the REST-based web services can be combined into what we had as returned to be web maps. Clicking on a particular web map, will show us the information that's in that REST service uh, in an interactive map, such as this one. The information from this particular portal is actually catalogued on Arches Online. As this is public information, anyone can go to www.arches.com and search for this information. You can see here a search for Schools Ireland 2013. Any information satisfying those tags comes back to me here in Arches.com. The information that come back, comes back includes the web maps that we just saw, but also the feature services, web feature services, that are behind those web maps. And I can click on any of those web feature services to find out more information about it. Including what its REST endpoint is. I can go to this REST endpoint and access that information from the REST endpoint in exactly the same way as I did with the information from the CSO server. And I can use this information and build it into my Arctis desktop session or indeed into a web application that I might care to develop. So what we're going to talk about today is how we can use Arctis for desktop to access these web services. In particular, how we can use our catalog to make connections to various GIS servers that are out there on the GeoWeb and how we can use the catalog window in ArcMap to access the same server nodes from within ArcMap and simply drag and drop, drop web services onto our map canvas to make new maps. We'll also take a look specifically at the MapGenie web services from the Ordnance Survey Ireland and how we can connect our Arctis desktop to these high quality, high resolution series of base map services for Ireland which are served via a WMS endpoint that we can add to ArcMap. And coming back to Arches Online, we look at how from within Arches Desktop, we can search for information relevant to Ireland on Arches Online and add that information directly to our Arches for Desktop session. We'll also take a look at how we can use base maps that are provided by Esri directly within Arches Online and combine these base maps with thematic data that we might have on our own network or that we might access on other people's servers directly or via Arctis Online. 
And finally, we'll have a look at the secrets of layer files. Layer files allow you to create pointers to data, including web services, and store those pointers for easy reuse in later Arctis desktop sessions. I'm going to demonstrate a number of ways of adding information to this ArcMap session using either REST endpoints or layer files. This being ArcGIS, we never give you just one way of doing something. There are various different ways of accomplishing what you're trying to achieve based on whatever your use case is at a particular point in time. I want to return to this feature service with primary school information in it. You can remember that this is hosted feature service. It's actually hosted on the Department of Education's Arcgis Online for Organizations account, and this is its endpoint. So it's slightly different than this sort of information, which is hosted on the CSO endpoint on their local Arcgis server. The primary school's information is listed in the Department of Education's portal, and this is its public listing that you can access by doing the search that I did on www.arches.com. You can see that when I search for and find this resource, I get an action button. And the simplest way of getting this information into my Arches desktop session is clicking on the Open in Arches 10.1 for Desktop link. This will download a layer file from Arches Online, pointing at that information. And I can open this directly in Arctis Desktop. If I flick over to my Arctis Desktop session, you'll see that it's now added that layer into my ArcMap session. And if we look at the source of this layer, you'll see it lists the information that we saw on the Department of Education portal. And if we look at the layer properties on the primary schools, you'll see the source is pointing directly back at the same REST endpoint that we looked at a few moments ago via the browser, showing conclusively that this data is actually coming from the feature service. We can treat this data now as we would any other data in ArcMap. We can zoom and pan on it, navigate it. We can perform identify functions on it to bring back the information about a particular school. We can also add context to this information by adding a base map directly from Arches Online. In this case, I'm going to pick the OpenStreetMap. So now we've created in our desktop a mashup of information being streamed directly from Esri via OpenStreetMap and from the Department of Education via their web services. None of this data is stored locally on our machine, yet we're using it as though it were local data directly in ArcMap. And I want to return to the CSO information. Here I'm back at the CSO Arctis server REST endpoint. And again, back into their home directory. And I'm going to copy the address of that home directory and move to our catalog. So our catalog is the component of Arctis for Desktop subsystem that you use to manage your data. This can range from data on your local C drive, on your network, in database servers that you might have um, on your local network or in enterprise databases that you might have accessible to you on your network. Most people are more familiar with these folder connections and most people are using these to manage their local data in shapefiles, in geodatabases, etc. on their local disk. Few of any people actually go down all the different nodes that are here available to you within Arct Catalog to see what else is on offer. You can see right down the bottom here, if I close up 
these nodes, we have a GIS server node. And this allows us to add either ArcGIS servers, its predecessor ArcIMS servers, OGC based web services including web coverage service, web map service and web map tile service directly to our catalog and use the resources that these service, servers offer in our maps. I'm going to take the option to add an ArcGIS server. In this case I'm going to be a user of GIS services. All ArcGIS server instances provide a number of roles including administrator that administers the server, publishers that can publish GIS services to the server and users that can simply use information they find on the server. And into the server URL I'm going to paste the information I just copied from the REST endpoint. Removing the word REST I don't need to give a username and password because these services are not secured. I need to finish. You can see that it's now added a new server node in my ARC catalog. Clicking on the server node, see exactly the same information we saw a few moments ago on the REST endpoint. I can go into the 2011 folder and pick my small areas um, from the 2011 census gives me some information about those. I can preview them. These are scale dependent. So they'll only draw and I'm quite zoomed in. In fact, I'm not going to get those to draw because I don't have the context of a background map at the moment. But the key thing is I now have a layer that I can take and drag into my ArcGIS desktop session. And now we're seeing small areas added to the map that I created previously using OpenStreetMap and the Department of Education school locations. And again, I can click on any of these small areas to access its information directly as published by the CSO, including a link to their website, which gives me a wealth of information about this particular small area based on every theme in the small area population statistics. The sort of functions that I can perform on one of these web services depends on the sort of web service that it is. You may remember that I added the CSO information from their REST endpoint published by their ArcGIS server. This is in fact what we call a map server equivalent to a web map service. I'm not able within ArcGIS desktop to alter the visualization, in other words, the symbology of this layer. I can't perform selects on it, and um, I can do these sort of identifies that I've already shown you. However, this layer with the school inventory in it is actually a web feature layer, a web feature service, and I can do many more things to this, including changing its symbology. And I can also perform selections and treat this as a normal piece of local data and open its attribute table and see the schools that I've selected. So the message here is that web feature services are slightly more functional than web map services. We can even with web feature services edit the data, both the attribute and location data of information in the web feature service based on our security credentials on the ArcGIS server that we're accessing the information on. Also from the web feature service, we can export the data to a local data store. So if I'm working on those particular two schools, I can save them to a shapefile or to a geodatabase. Alternately, I can save this information as what we call a layer file. So a layer file is a pointer 
to a layer that looks exactly like this. So whatever I've whatever layer I've added from a server, I can save as a layer file and share that layer file with my colleagues. So for instance, I'm just going to save this as post primary school inventory layer. If I remove this now from the map, I'm left with the OpenStreetMap and the census information. But I can go back and add a layer file. Navigating to the directory where I stored the layer file, I can simply sorry, double click the layer file to add that layer back to the map. It resources the information from the server and applies the symbology that I added retrospectively to it. So layer files are a really useful way of saving our connections to ArcGIS server or ArcGIS services that are being hosted on ArcGIS Online. We can save that layer file, we can send it to colleagues, and we can share the information, useful information, that we find on other people's servers amongst those in our organization or beyond.